Prime Minister, you've agreed with David T.C. Davis that none of us are going to get what we want. But more importantly, um, isn't it the case that that applies to the British people as well? And you've always talked about making sure you want to implement the will of the people. Um, isn't it right now that we, we know what version of Brexit that we may get when you reach that landing zone, that you actually check it is what the people want or whether they'd rather stick with the deal that they have? Well, I, I'm afraid I haven't changed my view on this, uh, on this issue from the discussions we've had both uh, privately and publicly on it. I continue to believe that having Parliament having overwhelmingly given the decision to the British people and said, do you want to stay in or uh, leave the European Union? The British people having, in the biggest exercise in democracy in our history, said we want to leave the European Union. Government at the time having said it would abide by the result of that referendum. I believe it's important that we do that. And uh, I don't believe it's right to effectively say to people, think again. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's all, you know, Sometimes people say, oh, well, people didn't know what the uh, deal was going to be. They didn't know what this was going to be like. Actually, I trust the British people rather more. I think the British people had um, an instinct as to what it was that they wanted to see. And they voted. That, that very many of them are deeply unhappy with the deal. Indeed, the, one of the reasons it won't pass Parliament is even the loudest voices for Brexit won't vote for the deal. So how can you be sure this is the will of the people unless you go back and ask them whether this particular deal is the will of the people. I think for most uh, members of the public, actually, they just want us to get on and do it. They, uh, want, us to, way... they want us to leave the European Union. There's a sense that they ask government to do that and they want government to be able to, uh, to deliver on that. Mm. Yeah. I think that's, that's very Thank debatable. You. Um, the next question is, would you rather accept a compromise on a customs union with the leader of the opposition or get your deal through subject to a confirmatory vote. That's what it looks like it might come down to. Because yeah. your deal would get through if you made it subject to a confirmatory vote. I think there are lots of, uh, that, that there, there's an assumption that is underlying your question, which uh, I don't accept. We are sitting down with the opposition to uh, see whether there is an agreement that we can come together. I can't say whether we've having <coughs> constructive talks we are having talks that are looking in detail at these issues. Um, uh, obviously, in terms of getting not just uh, uh, you know, the, the, the deal, but the legislation through the House of Commons, I would hope that we would be able to find an agreement that would enable us to have that stable majority, because I genuinely still believe that's the uh, best way for this, uh, for this country. But there are a number of issues that we're debating with the, uh, with the opposition. Mm. I think you were absolutely right to seek an extension. But, of course, what hasn't been extended is the end of the transition phase, which will still run out on the 31st of December next year. Do you think that that will leave you enough time to negotiate all the future arrangements and, and the deal? Well, obviously, the time has been uh, reduced in, in relation to that. Um, although it was always the case, of course, that with the, a new commission coming into place, there was going to be a period of time when the commission was not going to be... Um, able to be as fully engaged as, as otherwise in this, uh, in this issue. I think it's important, it, it is still possible to achieve it by the uh, end of December 2020. Right, so you won't be seeking an extension of the transition phase as well? The, it is, as I say, it is possible to achieve it by the end of December 2020. The withdrawal agreement has within it the possibility of an extension of that implementation period. Can you think of any other major international trade deals that would be negotiated in such a short space of time? Well, the, I forget what the average, the average figure for negotiating trade deals is actually uh, a, a lot shorter than many people think it is. We're operating, we've already got the basis for the future uh, deal in terms of the political declaration, so a considerable amount of work has already been done in relation to, uh, in relation to this. Okay, and, and finally, I think one thing that appalls people is how much of the domestic agenda has just been sidelined because of Brexit. And one particular example of that is the social care green paper. I mean, we have an absolute crisis in social care and a need to, to find a long-term sustainable solution. Could you, Prime Minister, set out, because I've, I've asked repeatedly about this in the, in the Commons, when is the social care green paper going to be published so at least we can get on and start debating it? First of all, I, I'm 
reject the concept that we have simply set to one side or ignored the domestic agenda. There are many aspects of uh, what we've been doing in the domestic agenda which perhaps haven't uh, hit the headlines in the way that they might have done in another way in, in different circumstances, but which we have been getting on and delivering for people across, this, uh, across the country. In relation to social care, of course, there are a number of commitments that have already been made in relation to funding, extra funding that has gone into local authorities for social care. Uh, part of, obviously, the work that will be done, as I indicated in the House of Commons today, in, in uh, the Chamber today in PMQs, it, uh, in, is about the interaction between the health service and uh, social care, and the long-term plan in the health, National Health Service is an important element of, of that, and obviously that is now um, being put into uh, being put into place. Really being hampered by the failure to publish the social care green paper, if I may say, Prime Minister. I understand why, given that the social care green paper has been written, mm. why it can't now be published. I mean, today we had a presentation of a bill on wild animals in circuses. Um, I would say that, with respect, what the public really want to see is the publication and debate of social care, which has a profound impact on people across this country. I recognise the impact that social care has on people across this country. I think what people want to know is that this is a government that has been uh, dealing with these issues, that we have been, as, we, as I said, uh, four billion, around four billion pounds is uh, more uh, money is available this year to local councils in relation to adult social care. Uh, I think it is important that we look at these other issues. It's not just, there is a question about the long-term sustainability of social care. There's also, I've always said this is a short-term, medium-term and long-term issue. And the medium-term is also about the way in which we interact health service and social care and ensuring that issues like delayed discharges from hospitals are being reduced, such that, which is better not just for the hospitals, it's better for the individuals concerned. So these are issues that we are continuing to look Thank at. Thank you, Prime Minister. We will bring forward a green paper on social care um, in, in at the earliest opportunity. But, but Prime Minister, you have, with respect, to answer my question. What I'd like to know is when. We know it's been written. We know it's ready to go. Will you, will you publish it? No, I, I'm sorry. The, the, you're making an assumption that there is a completed green paper on social care. Um, and uh, no, as I say, we will, bring, uh, we will bring a green paper on social care forward. Uh, we will do so as soon as possible. There are a number of aspects of social care that we are looking at and that we will be continuing to look at. Um, it's, there's a long-term sustainability issue. There is also the medium-term issues about how we ensure best practice is going to be uh, is, is introduced. Best practice as it is today, but also looking at what we think best practice should be in the future. We were promised from the dispatch box that it would be published before Christmas. I, I'm afraid I don't think that's good enough.